Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First John chapter five. Whosoever, John three sixteen, believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and every one that loveth him, that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that the love that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So salvation is wrought by Jesus Christ and God. They're one in one. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Explain how Jesus can be God and God be Jesus and the Son and the Father. I can. That's one of those mysteries of the of the Trinity. By this we know that we love the children of God, the saved, our family, that be the sons of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. And we talked about the commandments through the last four chapters. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Oh, I love that brother over there. I have to love him. Oh, that's not what it says. You do it because you're of God. You do it because you want to do it. See, God tries our hearts, our motives. You can, you can do whatever you want for God and walk away from the judgment seat of Christ and say, well, why didn't I get a reward? Because you didn't do it with the right heart. You did it because you had to do it. You did it because you griped and complained doing it. You did it because you were forced to do it. You did it because you did it for some other reason other than God. Doing God's service is not grievous. Matter of fact, sometimes it's entertaining more than what the world can give you. And I say that by being on the street and a street preacher. It's interesting what God will bring to you in your life. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That new birth. That new birth takes you out of the world and gives you eternal life and gives you what the world cannot have. Even Jesus said in the Gospel one, uh, John one time, he said, listen, the Spirit of God the world cannot receive. They are not His. I'm paraphrasing that. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Well, look at that. Look at that faith. That's the victory. My faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, I've got greater victory in the world. I've got greater victory over death. I've got greater victory over uh, hell. I've got greater victory of the eternal life through Jesus Christ because I believe. So, looking at a note here. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. There you go. I said this prayer. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Well, I don't know. Do you believe he's virgin born? Well, I don't know. Do you believe that he came out and rose again the third day according to Scripture? Well, I don't know. You're not saved. There has to be things that you have to believe to be saved. Or there's no salvation. That's why you got to have the word. You got to show that person, hey, you're a sinner, 
You got to show him who Jesus Christ is. You got to show him the finished work of Jesus Christ and what you need to do to be saved. Believe on him. But what must you believe? The Godhead of Jesus Christ in the finished work. This is he that came by water and blood. We found that in John. They pierced his side, and I forget, it was the water of the blood, the blood of water came out, even Jesus Christ. So he was man, and he was God. 100% man, 100% God. Man is water and blood. I don't know what percentage of water we are, but we're water, and we bleed. Not by water only, that's the first birth. Born of Mary. But by water and blood, life. And this is, I mean, and it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. Now, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Now, here's the condemnation. People are going to stand at the great white throne judgment in the church age. Church age. They will stand at the great white throne judgment saying, oh, I didn't believe in Jesus. I never heard about Jesus. I didn't think Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's going to step up and say, listen, I convicted them. Gospel tract, someone preached, they invited him to a church, they heard a hymn, they heard a Christmas care, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit will say, I told their heart who Jesus was. Enough for them to go seeking. And then at that point, if you lie, you, know, I did, you are lying about the work of the Holy Spirit, which is truth. When you, I'm saying the church age, when you stand condemned from the church age, from the time that Jesus rose out of that grave, the book of Acts, halfway through for the Gentile, to the rapture, you're lost. You're in big trouble. You are without excuse, and especially when someone's preached to you, especially when someone's taking a Bible with you, someone's giving you a gospel tract, they're giving you a reading card with scripture, you're without excuse. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Did I forget something? Oh, I forgot verse 7, didn't I? Well, let me read you a note in my Bible. I'm not going to tell you what the Bible, what the Bible is. It is generally agreed that verse 7 has no real authority and has been inserted. That's a remarkable note for a King James Bible. It is remarkable that this verse, I'm going to read verse 7, is removed out of modern Bibles or footnotes, just like I said. My footnote says you ought to get a racer or get that, that whiteout. And go from verse 6 to verse 8. And you saw this in the book of Acts when it came to that Ethiopian eunuch getting saved. He, the, their Bibles remove, I believe, on Jesus. No, their Bibles go right to the water baptism. So what is the deadly thing about modern Bibles? Let's see what they leave out, or want you to leave out. For there are three that bear record in heaven. What's a record? It is something that is recorded, that is put down, it is filed for documentation. In New London, Connecticut, in City Hall, there is a record of my birth. In uh, Colchester, City Hall, there is a record of my marriage to Tracy and me. In the records somewhere, I don't know where they keep it with Social Security, there is a record of our Social Security numbers. And the record with the NSA, every time I say bomb, blow up, or Islam, something like that, there's a record. Sorry. So, let's go out and get some bomb bombs. Bomb, no, no, no. So, there's a record in heaven. Does that sound so bad? There's a record in heaven. You know, my name is recorded in heaven. My land, my my, my name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. My actions are being recorded, written down. The only way you're going to erase that is First John, one nine. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's the only way my actions... Listen, you think you can read a life about David and 
Adam and Noah and Moses and Elijah. There's a book in heaven. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it says Stiley Hayward. And it's being written down what I'm doing. That's a record in heaven. God is a great record keeper. Go back and read First, Second Chronicles. Go read Numbers. I guarantee God is keeping track how much I spend on my dog and how much I spend on him. All right, so I had no problem with the record in heaven. I already made it to you through these, through Genesis to First John chapter five. Forgive my nose is itchy. I've already said I'm going to have wood hair stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm a sinner. I hope I get reward. All right, so here's a okay. Here's the record. The Father. We have any problem with the Father? I have no problem with God. That's God. I'm a child of God. I have no problem with the Father. The Word. Okay, let's, that's a little misunderstanding there. We'll come back to a minute. And the Holy Ghost. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, we know who that is, don't you? And the Holy Ghost, we know who that is. And these three are one. So where would the problem be? Out of that, out of that verse. And we know what John 1 1 is. I'll go to John 1 1 and I'll read it to you. You can look it up later. If you don't think I'm misquoting. Well, I'm going to go to John 1 1 and I'm going to read that to you. This is going to be the only one that's a problem. The Word. For a modern Bible. That's supposedly the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That give you a problem? Um, the same was in the beginning with God. You see, he's not that light. That was the true light, which light every man that comes to the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 10. <coughs> and came on his own, his own received him not. Verse 11. Verse 14. The word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. What's the problem with verse 7 that you think it does not belong in there? It can't be the Father. We know who God the Father is. It can't be the Holy Ghost. We know who the Holy Ghost. Our problem as a Jehovah Witness is we don't want to put the word with the Father and the Holy Ghost. As a perverted Bible, we don't want to put the Word with the Father and the Holy Ghost because we change the Word. We add to the Word. We subtract to the Word. We footnote the Word of God. So we can't have in our Bibles put the Word as the Trinity because look what we have done to the Word. So we got to take this verse out. So in the modern Bibles, Jesus Christ is not the Word. Do you know what this Bible is all about? About my my soul, my salvation. No, it's not. You're telling me all through Chronicles, all through Kings, it's about you. Really? No. It's a line of Jesus Christ. How the kings fail, and we have to have the virgin birth because God cursed that line of the kings. So remarkable. So when you read 1 John 5, 7, just wonder yourself, why would they want to remove that? And check your Bible. Your Bible's got notes. It's probably a note somewhere in your Bible. If you got a non-King James Bible, oh, get yourself a King James Bible. And this is one of the verses I've shown the men in prison where they folded up their Bibles and said, I want a King James. So a man in prison understands this. Scholarship don't. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, well, we know that, and the water, and the blood and these three agree with one we just said who came by water and blood it's jesus christ jesus christ is the spirit jesus christ is the father jesus christ is the holy ghost that man body that jesus came in was also god body i could walk down to the nearest hall right now to people who wouldn't believe this and their new world translation, it wouldn't even be in there. But they're Jehovah Witnesses. If we receive the witness of men, 
All right? A man came to me and told me the saving grace, told me that it was a hell, told me I was a sinner. The witness of God is greater. What is that witness? We just read it here. The Holy Spirit. He came. He said, listen, listen to that guy. He has a Bible open. He is showing you in the Bible. You've never read the Bible. He is showing you through the Bible. You listen to that man and you listen to me. It's the same thing with Cornelius. Call for Peter. He will tell you. If you like the man that, that, that was the, the jailer in Acts 16, listen to that man and he's going to show you. So when somebody's witnessing to you, the Holy Spirit is there. So, and I've had many people I've witnessed to, and they walked away. Don't you feel bad if they walked away from you? No, they walked away from the Holy Spirit. It's not about you. You're just a vessel that the Holy Spirit's using. Because angels cannot witness to you. Jesus is not going to show up and come down and rap with you. I just read today that the Pope is going to canonize a bunch of children who saw Mary. You can't do that because it don't happen in the Bible. You got to see a man with a Bible with the work of the Holy Spirit. Now let me, now if this is the Bible, you believe this is the Bible, the King James, right? You believe the Holy Spirit is going to work with you on this Bible, correct? How can he work with you if you take him out and Jesus out in verse 7, the word out? You need that word to be saved. You need the Father to, to, to show you that you are in his wrath. You need the Holy Spirit to say, hey, wake up, buddy. Listen to that man with the Bible. If you ain't got the word in there and you ain't got Jesus in the equation of your salvation, you're not saved. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. What is that witness? The witness of a man and the witness of God. I don't think God's going to be in, okay, let's have candy bars underneath the seat. And if you bring five people next week to this church, well, you know, God's not into those antics. He says, preach the word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the God. The word of the word of the Lord, excuse me. In order to do that, you've got to have God in it. First John 5, 9. And a lot of people today, I gotta say to yourself, go back to your Calvary and find out was God there or were you just tricked? Find out now. Before it's too late, before you stand in the great white throne judgment, Jesus said, I never knew you, but I said a prayer. Sorry, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Now let me take off the, the, the sheep clothing off that guy who was witnessing and show you him the wolf. There's more wolves out there in sheep's clothing than there are good preachers. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in him has the witness in him yeah, I can't say have the witness in himself yeah okay I hate when they put that word on the next line you got the witness in you the Holy Spirit when you got saved and that's your certification we're going to see in a few minutes he that believeth not God has made him a liar ooh you imagine that guy in the church age standing before God to judge it? See the, I mean, the great white throne judgment? Oh, I don't think Jesus could have done it. We came from apes. You just call God a liar. I thought Mary could do it. You just call God a liar. My prophet, God, is a liar. My church, God, is a liar. My baptism, God is a liar. That's what you're telling God. I don't want to be in that shoe. When I'm saved and I come before God, I know this God's not going to say this because I'm going up in the rapture, whether I'm alive or dead. I'm going up in the rapture. But if God were to say, Stiley, why should I why should I let you be here? If I got to those pearly gates with Peter and it's not going to happen, why should I let you in? By the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. That's the answer. Anything else, you tell God 
he's a liar. When you witness to people and they walk away rejecting God and you tell them the truth, if they're a family member, if there's someone you're really friends with, you need to really pray for their soul because they're telling God, you're a liar. Lying's a sin. Revelation, was it 21 or 22? It says liars should have their part. And now I'm starting to see in the ministry a lot of men out there are lying. So I want today I was listening to a preacher preach about that. And the more I look at it, the more I look at it, yeah, that guy did lie. Respectable name. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. He rejected John 3.16. He rejected the love of God, which we read in chapter 4 and studied last night. And this is the record. All right, here we go. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let's remove that from our Bible. So, right, ready? Here we go. This is the record. What's the record? It's been removed. You just removed the account of how, how to be saved. This is the record that's spoken about in verse 7. That God has given to us eternal life. Eternal life how? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Go back and read Romans 10. The Word. You removed the Word. You cut the word. You put ink on the word. You mess with the word. I say a modern Bible. I don't think you're saved, but I don't. I'm not the judge. But kind of critical. <coughs> God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Go back to verse seven. That Son is the Word. John one one. Removing verse 7, you take the sun out. If you don't have the sun, what do we just read in this chapter? You don't have life. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? The world goes to hell. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, verse 11, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son, verse 7, removed in Bibles. You're playing on dangerous ground when you're doing modern Bibles. He that has the Son hath life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. And I'm going to go back over to the Gospel of John and read you chapter 3. It's the last verse. I forget what verse number it is. But it is the last verse in John chapter 3. And this is John the Baptist speaking. John the Baptist in John 3.16. He that believeth on the Son, removed in Bibles, verse 7, has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son, removed out of verse 7, shall not see life, but the wrath of God, that is hell, abiding on him. Scripture with Scripture. First John, excuse me, first John runs us back to John 3. Excuse me. All right, he that has not the Son of God has not life. And John the Baptist said, it's the wrath of God. You do not have the Son, you do not overcome the world. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, that is Jesus. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. So you question your eternal life. Are you reading the Bible? A lot of times people who question their, their salvation, they're either young in the Lord and they still got to grow, help them, guide them. Well, what do you do with a Christian that's older? How often are you read the, the, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's get, for these three bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy, how often do you read the Bible? Well, my Bible doesn't say the Word. 
so you don't have these things written that you may know you have eternal life. He says, Stiley, how do you know you have eternal life? This book, this King James Bible tells me I have eternal life. This book tells me what would happen when I wasn't even there in the beginning. You don't even have anybody to tell you who the Big Bang did. You have no ape that wrote down that one day he walked through the, through the jungle and all his hair fell off. And for hundreds of billions of years, the other apes laughed at him. While he sat there in the tree stump waiting for the woman to lose all her hair. But I had the record of God says I was there. Oh, let's see. Wait a minute. Let's see. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Verse 1. Verse 2 in the spirit. And then it says, God said, let there be, and that said is the word of God. So there in the beginning, Genesis 1-1, Genesis 1-2, and Genesis 1, there is God the Father, God the Word, let there be, and God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. The creation. you got to believe in Jesus Christ was part of the created work. And these things have I written that you may know you have eternal life. Read your Bible. Then you'll get your confidence. And he says, the name of the Son of God. Paul has told us that there are other Jesuses out there. John says, Son of God. That name. Acts 4.12. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And you look at ministries around, all you see is that ministry guy's name. Isn't that particular? Why are all these ministries in the name of the man part of the ministry, and but not the name of Jesus Christ? Why is that name? That name can't save you. Jesus. I'm starting to go through these hymns right now. You know what's missing a lot of them? Jesus. You know what Fanny Crosby puts in her, her hymns? Jesus. And this is the confidence, you want confidence, that we have in him, God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now, you know what John just did in that verse, according to his will? John has said that God has not given you a blank check. Oh, God, give me the Corvette or the Mustang or whatever car you like, your dream car. If that wouldn't be according to his will, that would be your lust. But we do have things for God and His work and for the pleasure of Jesus Christ and the testimony of the Holy Spirit. You ask God something and He hears you. But didn't say He was going to say yes, though. That's the thing. But He hears you. And we must get to the fact is that God answers yes, no, not now. My heart sometimes rings out to the people I'm preaching to. Lord, they're lost. They're going to hell. They need to be saved. And then, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Holy Spirit says, Stiley, let's get with reality here. Lord, they're going to hell. I know they're going to hell. But what's the Bible say? It says, For who is there believes on him shall not be ashamed, but shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should be saved. Christ died for the, for every, for the world. What does the Bible say? Yes. Broad is the way. They're not all going to get saved, Tyler. That's reality. Few will enter through the gate. Now, Sally, you show me in your word where it says, I'm going to reveal to you everyone that does get saved. And you're not going to find it. But I hear you praying for them. I see your tears. I hear your heart. I hear you. And if we know that he hears us. Some people don't expect God to answer. Because they don't think God hears them. Whatsoever we ask. We know that we have petitions that we desire of him. I 
I don't ask God for anything. Well, then throw 1 John 5, 15 out the window then. Because it says petitions, that's prayers, that's wants, that's a plead. Alright, now we're going to get, this is a little bit difficult ground here. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death. I'm thinking death penalty. I don't know. And he shall ask and he shall... He, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. The other particular I saw in some commentaries is another sin that could be a sin unto death is your hostility to God. You're continually rejecting God. You're continually turning your back on God. And you get to the point, it's, you know what? You're dead. Whether saved or lost. Saved, you're no use to God. If you're not saved, you just continue to reject, continue to reject, and you're totally dead. And then, I, there are some sins out there. In the man's world, there are death penalty sins. You see someone who's about to do a murder or think about murder or get in trouble? No one was there to talk to Cain. Only Abel. All unrighteousness is sin. You got it? And there is a sin, none unto death. That puts sin right in the bucket. Gives you the definition. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. The spirit in a new life, the new creature that I am, the child of God that I am, I don't sin. This flesh does. But as God's child, I don't sin. When this flesh sins, 1 John 1, 9. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not that's kind of funny because he says your adversary the devil goes about seeking who he may desire sin is sin and he that has begotten God keepeth himself when you keep your way in the way of God and doing right you're safe but when you fall into that unrighteousness now you're out of fellowship with God. Now you're, you're entering the realm of Satan. You are going in the way of the world. That's danger. You know, when you start crossing that yellow line of the road, you're going to get smacked. And it's going to hurt. And we know, we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Why do some Christians think the world's wonderful? And in that world, there's no love, chapter 4. Because they don't know God. Marvel not if the world hates you. And we know, I like that, that the Son of God is come. That's one of the things you got to believe. Jesus came and has given us understanding that we may know him that is true jesus said i'm the way the truth and the life and we are in him that is true even in his son jesus christ so the hymns here is god and then now we're at jesus so we're in god and we're in jesus because god and jesus are one this is the true god separating you from other gods And eternal life, which nobody else can give you but God and Jesus. Now watch this one. You know why the Roman Catholic Church does not want you to read the Bible? You might come, little children, that's the young ones, keep yourself from idols. Now, you would think that you would put that on a sign 
and stand out in front of a Roman Catholic church or any Catholic church with that sign, you would think they would come up. Really? That's what the Bible says? Yes, sir. No, no disrespect. But it says in the New Testament, by the beloved disciple John, who wrote Revelation, you are not to be involved with idols. Well, sir, they're aids to worship. Okay. So the last thing that John closed, look at all the things we've learned. Antichrist, the love of God that the world don't have. Jesus saves. We can go to God and say, God, I've sinned. I am so sorry. I repent. And you're faithful and just to forgive me. We walked and talked, John is saying, with Jesus Christ. We saw him. We heard him. We sat with him. We ate with him. And the last thing he says, no idols, little children. I guess that verse is. What? Everyone has got idols. Baptists have got idols. They're men, they're preachers, they're pianos, they're carpeting, they're fellowships, they're church building. That's their idols. They're cliques. That's their idols. Little children, keep yourself from my... Now, if he says little children, when you grow up to be a young man and you grow up to be a father, you would not have the idols in your life. So let's start you off long. <coughs> little child, do not have idols repeat after me do not have idols. that's an idol get rid of it you train that child the way he's to go no idols a lot of Baptists in their Baptist churches have not grown up on that one 